The Word of God contains the very mind and the very heart of God. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3. When you're a New Testament Christian, you'll find that as you come to church, there will be messages that will come to you from all different directions. And God not only is not interested in our souls, but also He's interested in our lives. You know, you'll never have a changed life until you have a changed soul. And once you come to know the Lord as Savior, then, then your, your soul is changed, but it'll change your life. You think about it, you watch a person come forward in a service or in a private setting, they give their heart to the Lord. And when they do, they are not only forgiven of sins, but they become a new creature. And that new creature inside of you, this new being inside of you, this new you, my friend has a different drive and a different direction. There's so much a difference in the being. And you wonder how someone can go and make a simple prayer and you find that their lives are changed. And it's because, my friend, God saves a soul and then he changes a life. And so God has a desire that your life and my life has been changed. And because I've been saved a long time ago, there's a lot of difference in my life. My life is so much different. And it's different because of what happened as a teenage boy, not completely understanding all of salvation, not understanding assurance of salvation or the depth, my friend, of his love towards me. But my life is, is terminally different and forever changed because of Christ. And so as you come to the church, as you come to God's house, and the Bible is open, as a matter of fact, that's supposed, that's supposed to what happens when we come to God's house. Amen. The book is supposed to be open. Amen. The Holy Bible is to be open. And when that is open and that Bible is preached, my friend, and it brings to you and to I all different kinds and diverse challenges. Uh, next Sunday we'll be talking about the babies and the baby dedication. It'll be a fun. I've prepared some of that message already. It's really going to be a neat, uh, about to be a blessing. But you'll find that there's so many different messages in different directions. So this morning, I want to speak this morning on the power of direction, on the power of direction. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5, and verse number 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Three words that, my friend, are spelled out for us that te teach us and tell us, my friend, what a person needs to do to have direction. They're very clear words. Look with this there, if you would, in verse number 5. First, the word is trust. Not trust just in anything, but trust in the Lord. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And then number two, the word is lean. Don't trust your own wisdom or your understanding, and lean not on your under, own understanding. The third word is found in verse number six. In all thy ways acknowledge him. The word is acknowledge. Be aware of his presence. Admit his being there. And that the result is, my friend, that you have the power of direction. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean on it to your own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. The way that God has made a man, the way that God has made us, is that he's made us, my friend, to have to have a power of direction. He's made us that way. I read a story of a man that was telling his story how that at a certain place in life he retired much earlier and bought a sailboat and settled down in the southern part of our country, and he was just at a life of eat and drink and at ease. He just had everything all together. And beside that, in that article, was another story of two Christian ladies, now that were both in their 80s. They'd served both of them for more than 40 years on the mission field in South Mexico. And in that process, their husbands had passed, and they, re they stayed there and ministered, and they were, the, the age had taken a toll on them, and they were having a difficult time. They were going over a mountain... They were going over a mountain and their brakes went out and both of them were taken into heaven. But the question after this article is most interesting, my friend, what is the greatest waste? The waste, my friend, of those two little lovely ladies that served on the mission field, reaping souls for a lot of years, going over a mountain because of the mechanical failure of brakes and both of them being taken, or the man sitting in a very comfortable place in life, which is a most wasted life. Can I say that, my friend, having the power of direction is so important? It's so important. All great Christians knew, my friend, what they were to be do, what they were to be doing, and where they were to be. Can I say that, my friend, your life will be a waste unless you know where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing? 
How many believe that it's good that the pastor's here this morning? Amen. Did you hear about the man that woke up in the morning and said, Honey, I am just very tired today, and I just really don't feel like going to church. They talked for a long time back and forth, and she began then her last reasoning to get this man to be motivated, which was her husband. And then she said, Honey, you need to go to church because you are the pastor. That's why you need to go to church. Amen. Can I say that it's very important, my friend, to have direction, and a Christian, my friend, is made to have direction. Remember, there was three steps. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Number two, and lean not on your own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will give direction to your path. It's very interesting, my friend, if there is these three steps to having direction, then, my friend, if I do not, if I don't trust, and if I don't lean right, and if I don't acknowledge, my friend, I wonder how much direction we have. I see and I feel Christian people in their hearts and lives when I feel so many times. I, feel, I find a people, my friend, that are lost of directions, that they don't have the purpose that God designed them for. And you know, God's wired me and God's wired you, my friend, to have direction in life. And without it, my friend, life, my friend, doesn't have the fullness of meaning. You know, I've been an outdoorsman since I've been a little guy growing up in I was raised on the very edge of the Shiawassee Flats, which is state and federal reserves. And so, uh, man, I lived in a great place to live as a young man that loved the outdoors. And I started as I would harvest a deer every year, I'd buy a new case knife and give it away to a new hunter and try to take somebody with me every year as a young man. And, and those things are really good. But after you did that a couple of times, I come to realize that, you know what? These things are kind of exciting and kind of a lot of fun, but there's still something really missing about life. And it was my direction. And he, my friend, shall direct your path. Can I say there's a lot of things that you and I can do in life, my friend, that are fulfilling and are filled with joy, and, and they're nice and they're convenient and they're fun and they're great. But at the very same time, my friend, there's an ultimate, my friend, desire that God has for you and I, that we have direction. If you'd unpack the mind of every Christian, my friend, that's successful, you find two things. First of all, you find, my friend, they knew where they were supposed to be and they knew what they were supposed to be doing. It's not only important that the pastor goes to church, but it's also important, my friend, that the people go to church. Because the fulfillment, my friend, does not come, my friend, because of who you are or what your name is. But the fulfillment in life comes, my friend, because of what you're doing and where you're at. It's important. It's important for you, my friend, to be in the center of God's will, to have the direction, my friend, that he desires to you, to be, you to have. If you unpack the minds of these successful people, my friend, you'll find the ingredient, my friend, that they have direction. They have the power of direction. They are doing, my friend, what they are doing because. And they've got their because. Everything we do, we have a because. Because everything we do, my friend, has a because. Amen. We say, I want to, or I need to, or she wanted me to. We were talking this morning, Craig and I were talking about our to-do list, and I asked him if he wrote down things on his list just so he can cross them off and he confessed. He's a 100% man as well, right? Amen? And you get those lists, and that's the reason that we do some of those things, because we're supposed to. The because of success of a successful Christian is because it's God revealed. The fulfillment comes, my friend, because of God revealed. You take the ingredient, my friend, of the purpose out of your life. You take the direction that God would lead you out of your life. And my friend, you're a fish that's out of water. You're, you're a person, my friend, that's in it, my friend, but you just can't seem ever to be satisfied or fulfilled. I think one of the great reasons there's so much sadness and anger in the general, but we're in an angry generation, do you know that? You walk into a place last night in Dayton, Ohio, wound 26 people and kill nine, complete body armor and a mask on, First of all, he's a coward, right? Amen. He's just a flat coward. But I'm telling you what, my friend, that's not a gun problem. That's an anger problem in that person's heart. Can I say, my friend, it might not be in Dayton, Ohio. It might be in Texas as well, where many were killed. What I'm trying to tell you is this, that we're living in a, in a generation, my friend, where people, my friend, are, 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 are mixed up. They don't have the power of direction. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean on understanding. Acknowledge him and he'll give you the direction you need. He'll show you where you need to go. He'll show you what you need to be doing. I think, my friend, the uneasiness of a generation that you and I live in 
And the anger that we see happening is because it's been generations of peoples and families, my friend, that have been without direction. They've tried this and they tried that. I seen the home that the shooter in Texas was in this morning on the news that he lived in. I seen his home. His home is as nice as any home, any home, any home within our area. It's very interesting. So it's not, my friend, the lack of things. It's not the lack, my friend, of, of a person had of their needs. It's not that's what created anger. My friend, he has an anger. He has a real anger inside him. They have something wrong with inside. And my friend, if you don't trust and if you don't lead and if you don't acknowledge, my friend, that direction that only God gives, that direction, my friend, that God and God alone can give, my friend, will be cause you to be very empty. And as you follow that and you stay with it, trying to fill that hole, which you cannot fill, my friend, with anything ever about this world, my friend, you'll forever. And so without the direction that God will give to you, my friend, there's no place that you can be that you can be happy. Your woman won't be sweet enough and your woman won't be pretty enough. Shiggy and I are going to be celebrating 48 years. You think about that, 48 years. And she's sending me away. I don't know what that means to Canada. I'm not sure exactly how all that happens. Amen. 48 years. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And I got breakfast while I was reading this morning, as I so often do if I'm home when I'm eating my breakfast. I'm just trying to tell you that, my friend, that when you get that direction, the purpose is there. The place is there. Fulfillment is there, my friend. It's the way that God designed you, my friend, that you must learn how to trust and lean and acknowledge. And then, my friend, and only then will God give you that direction. So many people are, they say they're just content, my friend, with their mate or their children or their job or their house or their country. Are they un just satisfied with so many things and places in and about their life? But it comes down to the real the matter is, my friend, they don't have the power of direction. That there's no reason they do what they do. There's no purpose for them to be where they are and do what they are. There, there's a purpose. And God has a purpose for it. He'll desire to give you that direction. Direction is, direction is not created, but it's revealed. You can't, well, I'm going to get this degree. Well, I, I'm going to change my major. I'm going to change the, my particular occupation. What I do. You can change all of those things, my friend. It's not something that you can do to create happiness. It's something that you obey because of direction. It's not something, my friend, that you can create. It's something that God reveals and gives to you. The power of direction. God will give you direction. It's interesting that God chose the foolishness of preaching for men to be saved. It's very interesting that God will take a sinner and use him to bring a message that's an infallible message from the word of God. He himself is a sinner and he uses the infallible, my friend, word of God in a sinner, my friend, to bring the truth to people so they can find not him, the speaker that is, but they can find the God, my friend, or the speaker. It's the, that's who God is. And so everyone and you and I have been created, my friend, that we need to be someplace doing something in that direction, my friend, only comes when we, first of all, trust, and we lean, and we acknowledge, and God said, and then I will give that to you. So I tell you, when you look for the world to supply your need, when you look for your mate, my friend, to make you happy, when you look, my friend, for your job to be enough, when you look for the paycheck, my friend, to satisfy the longings of a soul, my friend, it cannot happen and will not happen. Only comes, my friend, when we trust and we lean and we acknowledge and then God gives you the direction. We're made that way. Direction comes to those, my friend, who trust, who lean and acknowledge. Direction does some things for us. First of all, it fulfills the purpose for which we exist. Without the direction, my friend, any place is a good place. Without, my friend, having the address, my friend, my friend, any place is a good place. The Browns are here this morning with us, and I tried to find them. I didn't have a dress. I just had a house. I had, you know, when you get Baptist direction, it's kind of shaky, Brother Brown, kind of shaky. But I got the right house, and they just weren't home. And I went to the neighbors, and they didn't know who lived there either. So I didn't know if I had the, but I, I got the right house. Amen. I'm just trying to say that, my friend, to have an address is so important. So much difference. If you would have the address that God gives you for your life. Here's, the address, here's, the, here's the, the address I want you to be at. Here's where I want you to. Here's my place for you. And he said, not only is this the address, but I have the purpose, not only just the place you live. You know, can I say that 
fulfills the purpose of our life. It gives us anticipation. It gives us anticipation. Um, I can remember in Michigan, you know, having snow days. And I always had a lot more energy when I found that school was called off than I did when I had, knew that school was coming. You know what I'm trying to say? When mom said, you guys can go back to bed, we got a snow day, you don't have to go to school. I couldn't go back to bed, amen? I didn't want to go back to bed. And can I say, when school was on, it was harder to get up, and I'd like to stay in it a little longer, amen? Can I say that, my friend, it's very interesting, it gives us anticipation. When God puts you someplace, when God gives you a purpose, you know why this grand bunch of young people, I'm telling you what, these guys are something, these girls are something. I'm telling you what, they're powerful young men and young ladies. I mean, they're powerful. You know, they're powerful. I mean, they got, they got direction. I've seen, our, I've seen these workers at the altar with the Lord. I've seen them as they're working their steps out of their life, putting pieces together. Can I say that you and I must realize that it that gives us excitement? You know, Working up to Christmas is more exciting than Christmas itself. It doesn't last very long when you get there, amen? But working up to it and getting ready and making the plans, it's more exciting than the event itself. Can I say that, my friend, it gives us anticipation because God's going to use it. It changes the way you think. You'll have to figure out how you're going to do what God's laid on your heart to do. Can I say that it gives you an ability, my friend, to work in your heart and your head with the Holy Spirit of God, my friend, to find how you need to do what you need to do. It causes you, number four, it causes you to be more than you are right now. You have become more, my friend, as you find God's directions in your life. You, know, you think about the time when you were beginning to be moved by God and you were understanding and you're drawing to be saved. You think about that. After you've obeyed the Lord, you're so much more than you were before. You're so much different, but you're so much more. God led your heart to come and follow him in believers' baptisms, and you're more now than you were before. You're more now, my friend, because you obeyed, you did what God wanted you to do. You come to this church, God puts your heart in here, you come and you become a part of it, you're more now than you were before. Can I say that's, that's what happens? It causes you to become more of what you are. It's amazing. You know, I think there's some reasons that we ought to focus on what God wants us to do. Let me give them to you briefly. First of all, because it creates a personal goal in our heart. You know, it creates a personal goal in our heart. Goals are very important, I think, in life. I don't know that I write mine on paper. I don't know. I have, have 10-year plans, but I know they're goals. And, and I, I write my goals. I keep my goals. I try to fulfill my goals. I, I stay focused. I make, make points and times and, and certain days in the year that I, I focus on, on my goals and where I'm at and where I'm going. And... Um, I'm going to do that as come October, my birthday, just so you don't forget it, amen. I don't want you to be late on that one, amen. I want you to, um, I, I focus on my life for that year of God's blessing and where I'm going in the next year. It's what I do, and it's, it's what, can I say that I want you to realize that when you and I, my friend, find the where and the what God wants us to do, my friend, it, it enables you and enables me, my friend, uh, to, to set those goals and go after it and fulfill and accomplish what God has for us. Now, let me give you my lesson, and we'll be done real quick. First of all, I want you to talk about those three steps, and I'll give them to you very quick. For three steps, my friend, that I think if you're going to have direction for your life, you'll need. First of all, you'll need to learn how to trust. You'll need to learn how to trust. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord, my friend, means completely to come to a place in your life when you give yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to trust in you. Trust in the Lord, not with part of you or a piece of you, but with all of your heart. Trust in him. Come to the place, my friend, when you, when you, you literally, my friend, allow him to be the one, my friend, that is the one that's supplier of all pieces and parts of your life. Brianna is saying this morning, I don't know that I've ever heard her sing a solo with the choir. I don't know that I have. Maybe I have, maybe I've forgotten. But it was sweet and it was powerful. It was neat. But there's places you come to when you trust. You say, Lord, okay, now, here's your instructions. Here's your direction to me. Now I'm going to give this to you. Trust me. Allow the Lord to have control of your life. And then lean. Uh, if you haven't gotten over 50, you probably never had any trouble by waking up in the morning that are dizzy. Amen. But if you ever woke up in the morning and dizzy and you get up, 
from your place of sleep and you feel like you're walking sideways, you know, you just feel like you're, you're going sideways and leaning. God said, uh, how many ever had that problem before? Yeah, that's the old people of the crowd, amen. Uh, and lean not on your, don't, don't lean in the direction of your thinking, your own reasoning, lean in your trust. And lean not into your own understanding. Don't put this piece of the puzzle and that piece of the puzzle, and don't let that be more powerful, my friend, than your trust. And lean not onto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. In other words, the last thought is simply, this. the word is acknowledge. In other words, be conscious of his presence in your life. Be conscious of his presence in your situation. Be conscious, my friend, of the fact of where you are right now. Where are you at right now? God said, trust, trust right with all your heart. Lean not to your understanding, and then acknowledge, recognize God where you are today. And he said, there will be direction that will be given from you that can only come from me. Can I say there's power in directions? Now, let's put those three things in place, and, and we'll make our conclusion. First of all, I ask you to, where's your trust at this morning? Do you believe what God has said? Do you believe what God has told us? Do you believe? Do you believe in the fact that, my friend, there is a heaven? Do you believe that there is a liberal? Do you believe that? And then are you going to trust in your own understanding or are you going to lean away from your own understanding? And then, my friend, would you acknowledge him? If you'd acknowledge him this morning, you'd come to a place to say, you know what? Okay, in this moment, in this hour of this day of my life, I need God's direction. Will you follow it? Will you follow what he shows you? This morning, if you're here without the Lord as your Savior, all of us were like that at one time and one place. All of us were there. All of us were there. When I come to that place when I trusted and I didn't follow my own understanding, I mean, I was in a row of young people, and, and I didn't know all of them yet. Just been around them a little bit. Some of them were my friends that had been saved. If I would have followed the pressure of my own heart about what others would think about me, I would have not made that decision. Trust and lean and allow God now to be the one that shows you what you do this morning. Maybe you've saved and been saved a long, long time. Boy, there's, there's wonderful stories. But maybe you need to go back to trusting and maybe you're in a place when you're tempted to lean to your own way, maybe you just need to say, Lord, I'm going to trust you and acknowledge you. You know, fear creeps into all of our hearts. Doubt creeps into all of our minds. Questions, my friend, are always being shot at us. They always come to us, and we've got to go back, trust and lean and acknowledge, and he'll show you the way through. Amen? He'll show you the way through. How many believe the Lord will show us the way through? Amen? How many believe the Lord will show us the way up to heaven? Believe that? Amen? How, much, how many believe that the Lord knows all the way he has for you, all the way through the whining corners and curves and ups and downs in life, amen? He knows it all. Brother Jeff, you said the 21st year surgery? He knows all the way through, amen? Knows all the way through. I wonder while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed while we're still seated. I wonder if you would say this morning, Pastor, I need some direction. Maybe you say, Pastor, I need direction because I'm just really empty. I've lost where I'm going. I don't have a purpose. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be or what I'm supposed to be doing. But Pastor, just honest before you and God. Pastor, would you pray to God for me that, that I have that direction? Just pray for me. Pray for me. I need, I want that. I'm, I struggle just right now. Pastor, pray for me. I need to be in that place and the purpose. Thank you so much. I wonder while your hands are down one more time, I, I ask the question. I wonder how many could say, Brother Lamb, there's a place and there's a time when I came to the Lord by faith. I give myself to the Lord and ask him to be my Savior. And I know I'm saved and I'm grateful for his wonderful love for me. Just if you know that for sure, for assurance, for others that would, might know, I'm saved, Pastor, no doubt. I've got that settled, amen. I've got that settled, I know I'm saved. Thank you, may put it down. And then if you're here and you say, Pastor Lamb, I don't, 
I don't have this direction that you talk about from God's word. Pastor, pray with me that I would be saved, that I'd be forgiven, that I'd give the Lord my heart, that I'd turn my life to him. See my hand and pray for me. Pastor, see my hand and pray for me. I'm not sure I'm saved. No matter where you're at, I'll catch your hand. If you lift it up and then just back down, Pastor, I'm not, I'm not sure of that, Pastor. Pray for me. See my hand and pray for me. God bless you. We see your hand and so does God. Pray for me, Pastor. Thank you so much. Now stand with us and we'll make our prayer. Father, as we stand to our feet in your presence, we thank you for your truths that are so clear. They're so simple to follow. We don't get lost in the maze of steps. We simply need to trust. Don't confide in our own knowledge and understanding. We need to see you in every day of every moment. And we thank you for the promise of direction, the power of direction. So now, Father in heaven, have your way now. The saving of the lost soul, have your way, Father, in those that need to take steps of trusting and their leaning and acknowledging. Help them, Lord, as we come to you in our prayer. We come with great love. We return the love that you first gave to us. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. And amen. We're going to sing an invitation now, and what that is, I'm going to slip to the front, and others are up here. And if you're here this morning and you'd like to come and talk to the Lord, then this is your altar with the Lord. This belongs to you. It's not mine, though it's mine. It's yours as much as mine. It's a place where we just talk with the Lord. It's yours. Come to a place in your life when you can come to that altar easy, and you can talk often. But if you're here and not saved, it's a time, my friend, when you can come and we'll take the Lord's promises and show you how to be saved, how to be forgiven. Say yes to the Lord is the very first word, the very first day.